Hi, I'm Nitesh and I hack hardware and music. I'm also a co-founder of uh, Graviki Labs and at Graviki we hack some cool science experiments for the sake of environment and for the sake of nature where we live in. Before I tell you what exactly we do, I would like to show you a photo of mine, mine which I took recently. I call it my pollution selfie. This is the amount of pollution that we breathe in a month. This is the photo I took after I cycled for half a month in Bangalore city. So you can see, you can almost relate to a amount of particulate matter which is PM 2.5 that we breathe in which is actually captured in this test tube by us. So this is what exactly you guys breathe in while walking on Bangalore streets. And this PM 2.5 which we breathe in gives you lung cancer, heart attack, stroke and other pulmonary diseases. According to WHO annually, 6 million people die globally due to illnesses related to pollution. And ever wonder what is the air quality around you? This is the air quality index of Delhi this morning and the safe limit is 50 micrograms per centimeter square and you can see the West Delhi 323. It is more than six times the safe limit by WHO. I never wondered about Bangalore. Every part of Bangalore has, is again greater than 50. Look at Penia and look at Chickpeat. They are at least three times. And one thing to be noticed here is also that there are just five, sta five stations in Bangalore reporting pollution. What about pollution levels in your electronic city? What about pol pollution levels in Indranagar? So to deal with this issue, we launched an open source hardware platform a few months back. It was a key form, it was in a keychain form factor, which you can strap it behind your mobile phone so you can uh, connect it with your keys. And you can swipe in, swipe out different sensors. So we swiped in air pollution sensor and sent it to our friends in Delhi to measure air pollution. And one of my friends replied, okay bro, it's so cool. But actually, I already know that there is air quality is too bad in Delhi. What can you do to solve the issue instead of just sensing it? So at that point, we realized that sensing, just, no, just only sensing air pollution is not okay. We have to actually uh, do something to reduce it. So then we pivoted and started looking around how, the, uh, started looking at solution, how can we re reduce the air pollution? Then we started uh, reading some literature about how people are doing it. So we found this solution which people are using since the advent of industrialization. This is called wet scrubber. In this device, uh, blue gases from the exhaust or the polluted gases are meant to pass through, through a uh, tube and they spray some sort of solvent, for example, water from the top. And they essentially convert air pollution into water pollution, which is also acidic. And they, that water generally ends up, uh, lands up into landfills. So it essentially converts air pollution in, in, into water pollution and land pollution. And it's sad to see that people are still using these kinds of solution and that in, in India. So we continued our research further and we figured out uh, another cool way of capturing pollution which uses plasma. So what is plasma? We all know that there are three forms of, three fundamental states of matter, solid, liquids, and gas. So plasma is the fourth state of matter. And it, it, is, it naturally occurs, I mean, you can't find it in the, like the other three forms of the matter on Earth, it, because it doesn't occur on its own. So you can artificially create it, and turns out that you need very high voltages to generate plasma. For example, it occurs naturally during li lightning. So the arc you see is actually plasma and it's, it's quite hot. So we, we need to generate this plasma. So, so there was no easy way to generate it, but it turns out that there's a source which we all used to have it in our houses which could generate plasma. And it was actually an old TV. So the old CRT monitors used to have these high voltage transformers in them to drive the CRT tube. So I went to an uh, old TV repair shop and asked for, asked for this transformer and then made a small circuit around it to drive it. And I will show you in a bit. So 
So you can see right now. Can you zoom in? Can you see the arc? So this arc you see is plasma. So we can treat it as like thunderstorms happening right now in front of you. But why can't you hear them? Because they are happening at a frequency greater than 20,000 hertz. So it's beyond your audible range. But we can actually control their frequency. I will play a sound to it, an audible sound. So now you can see the sound. And this sound is coming from plasma. So it's right now running at 1700 hertz, which you can hear. But I can control the sound. So you can modulate the frequency of thunderstorms happening between these two arcs. And what if I can, what if I give it a modulated sound, for example, a song? So this song is played by the plasma arc which you can see and also hear. You can also play Indian classical. And this is quite hot. I can show you also. And right now I will show you how you can use the same plasma to capture pollution. I hope you can all see the smoke right now. Can you all see? So when I switch on the plasma, so right now you can see the smoke coming out. But I, when I switch on the plasma, the song disappears. So right now the smoke is getting ionized and captured inside the cylinder. And also you can simultaneously listen, listen to the music also. So So ladies and gentlemen, this is Raga Hamsudhani capturing pollution for you. And it would be really interesting to see how the data of the different ragas, how this, like how the performance and then correlate 
वॉट इफ राग भूपाली परफॉर्म्स बेटर देन राग हंस ध्वनि So we worked on the similar design and started building our prototypes. And this was uh, this used to be our office a lot of time, actually lab. And then we started playing out with fire, and then we were thrown out by the owner because he didn't like us breaking stuff there. So, so we took out a garage and then started breaking our hands and legs. And then we finally made our first prototype, which we mounted on a smoky car, which rather looks funny. And we drew across Bangalore with this car, capturing smoke. And then we later refined our prototypes. And since we are bootstrapped, we carried our first unit on cycle, and then later deployed it in real world. And so I would like to show a video of our unit working. process this smoke, we remove the uh, unwanted uh, heavy metals and other hydrocarbons and then we process them into our inks. So these markers you see, these all contain the ink uh, found from this suit, which we all breathe in. So this pen is approximately 50, 50 minutes of your diesel car exhaust and this one is 130 minutes of your diesel car exhaust. And we did a campaign around our inks. So a lot of people ask us, why inks? Why can't you make other things? So we tell them, actually, we can even make carbon nanotubes, or you can uh, sell it to tire industries for their black tires. But then if you ask a common man, he can't relate to like nanotubes. Like most of us don't even know how what is a nanotube, how it works. But you all have, you all carry a pen. You all draw, you all write then that's how every common man can relate to inks, not through carbon nanotubes. So we, that's why we make inks. And then if we sell more number of them, then the community also grows and then the awareness also grows that also help us reducing more pollution. So we did these campaigns across uh, four or five cities in the world, Hong Kong, London, Berlin, and New York. And we had now have a strong community of around uh, 700 artists around the globe who are spreading awareness about pollution through our inks. This was, uh, this was uh, Hong Kong and this was Berlin. So we have cleared almost 1.6 trillion liters of air and that uh, converts to approximately 1,000 liters of air ink. And the t-shirt I'm wearing is also printed with our air ink. This one. And with our ink, we also stop the deliberate burning of furnace oil, which is, uh, which happens in uh, many countries in Middle East. So they burn furnace oil to generate carbon black for ink industry. So in a sense, we also double the impact by reducing the deliberate burning of furnace oil. And also we have made a community of, as I said, 700 artists around the world who are spreading awareness about pollution through our inks. So I think it's high time that we don't forget people like Buckminster Fuller who said pollution is nothing but the resources which we are not harvesting. And I think it's high time that we start thinking out of the box, breaking boundaries, and look for unconventional solutions from real, for the real world problems around us. Because none of us can afford a ticket to Mars. So we better act now, or else the damage will be beyond repair. Thank you. <laughs>